Hello people of the internet, welcome to episode 15 of Paint to Life. New for Paint to Life, I started breaking my video down into chapters, so if you look down there at the play bar as well as in the description, you can skip ahead to the lore section of the video, the story section of the video, or the reveal section of the video with the finished model, so that you can just jump right ahead if that's what you're interested in. Of course, I'd love it if you watch the whole thing through, it does help support the channel. If this is your first time here to Paint to Life, welcome. Uh, if you like my content and storytelling, please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I really do appreciate it. So what exactly is Paint to Life? Paint to Life is a YouTube channel where we take these, breathe life into them with storytelling, and turn them into these. I'm GMA Tank, let's get painting. Okay, last week we painted a blue dragon, Raylan. You can find that video right here if you missed it on that little eye if your device supports it. Um, I strongly suggest you check it out. Some school curriculums are considering adding it for the anti-bullying message that it contains. Today, however, we're gonna be taking it down a few inches and we are going to be painting some Modrons from the plane of Mechanus. Imagine a plane of absolute law and order. A plane devoid of the concepts of karma, emotion, ethics, and morality, as these are all constructs of organic beings to help categorize and process the world around them. It sounds very sterile, right? Almost mechanical? Well, welcome to Mechanus, the clockwork of the universe, with a tangible presence in every other plane in existence. This is a plane consisting of massive cog-like structures that are continent-sized and always moving and operating under absolute certainty. If you drop something on the ground in Mechanus, as it falls, they will bounce and arrange itself in any kind of semblance of order that it might have had. Go ahead and roll some dice. Every roll will sequence one, followed by two, followed by three. If you pour water from a decanter, it will come out in the exact specified amount without any extra spillage or drips or randomness to it. Even nature takes on this quality here as rain falls from the sky with each drop symmetrically spaced out from one another. Talk about social distancing. Hell, if you looked at sand from a beach on Mechanus under a microscope, you'd see that it's comprised of tiny little cogs all spinning in unison. Nothing operates in a manner other than what it's programmed for in Mechanus. And at the center of that order is the androgynous Primus. Immune to all magic, ruler of all Mechanus, and the creators of the maintainers of this order, the Modrons. Modrons look like a weird blend of organic and geometrical shapes, with both organic and mechanical parts blended together like a cyborg. They're absolute physical manifestations of law without regard to good or evil. They follow a strict hierarchy, with each rank reporting to the rank directly above it and issuing commands to the rank directly below it. Now there are precisely 300 million Modrons in existence in the universe, and that number is unchanging. If a Modron is destroyed, it disintegrates, and somewhere randomly a Modron of a rank beneath the one that was destroyed in a flash of light takes the shape of the next rank above. And that process continues all the way down to the lowly Monodrone at the bottom, who will suddenly appear in Mechanus and wander out of the cathedral to rejoin the, the rest of them. Now, monodrones are the lowest rank of modrons. They're so basic they can only do one thing at a time. They take orders from the duo drones that are the second rank in the chain, who can do two tasks at a time. The ranking structure is repeated for the tri drones, quad drones, and pentadrones, up all the ranks to Primus itself. Now, if you encounter any modrons during your travels, be aware that that's not an accident. They're there for a reason, possibly a mission. They're also not inherently violent, and they will attempt to resolve things non-violently as destruction completely goes against their nature of organization and order. However, if they are agitated or ordered into action, they will comply with zero pity and zero remorse. You see, Modrons are not individuals, they are collective, and all information gathered makes its way all the way up the hierarchy to Primus itself, which means it's virtually impossible to convince a Modron to go against something it's been tasked to do, even with the aid of magic. But what about our Modrons? There is a single monodrone and duodrone pair that are assigned to a factory on Mechanus, and their main role is to adjust all of the wall fixtures that are no longer level due to the continual vibrations of the factory. 
The dual drone inspects and points out the crooked pieces and orders the monodrone to straighten them. One day, a large explosion rocked the courtyard outside their factory. The pair went outside to check it out and a large random portal to some random realm had opened up, as sometimes happens in Mechanus. Before they could get closer to inspect it, a tri-drone had come by and investigated and detected that some creature of chaos had snuck into their realm and must be destroyed. It ordered the dual drone to track down and destroy this beast while it would go and get reinforcements. As the two marched around the perimeter of the factory, the monodrone suddenly stopped in its tracks and started beeping, fire, 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 fire. Sure enough, there was a fire raging inside the building. The two Modrons, bound by duty, charged into the facility. Large triangular flames of the exact size, growing from the floor to the ceiling, glowing from orange to yellow in a rhythmic trance-like pattern, were burning the combustible fluids and fabrics inside. The pair engaged the fire suppression system which quickly put out the blaze. Investigation ruled that the Chaos Beast must have gotten inside a conduit somehow and its mere presence had started the fire. One hour, 55 minutes, and 50 seconds, the precise amount of time it took the Tri-Drone and the dispatch unit to walk from the barracks to the factory and then back. The Modron unit could not find any sign of the Chaos Beast, so they departed, advising the Dual Drone and Monodrone to report on any other suspicious activity in the factory that they saw. 3.14 cycles afterwards, some worker constructs collapsed and went offline. The monodrone and duodrone pair reported the news, and when the repair team arrived, they concluded that the cause of the crash in the employees was due to a biological contamination of their organic parts, resulting in failure of the flesh to provide the sustenance required by their mechanical components. They were diseased. The pair did a thorough sweep of the facility until the monodrone stopped and started shouting, Poop! 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 Sure enough, there was evidence of feces and urine waste inside a housing unit that contained exactly 10 days, 8 hours worth of rations for the workers, enough for 31 shifts. Five cycles later, and on lap 2940 of their routine straightening patrol, the monodrone again alarmed, destruction, destruction, destruction. Sure enough, the duo drone had noticed something had been attempting to destroy a wooden structural beam. By tooth and claw, they were clearly intending on bringing down the whole factory. It was clear to the pair now that the Chaos Beast had not in fact left their factory. They had signaled for support and had been waiting for 23 minutes and 14 seconds when a power conduit on a nearby wall began sparking electricity, causing the main power auger of the factory to shudder and shake which in turn caused the whole factory to lurch under the rhythmic vibrations that were building and building. Unaware of how he knew this, the duo drone just knew there was an 83.5% chance that with that weakened structure beam, if they did not stop it, the entire building would come collapsing down. The duo drone ordered the monodrone to fly into the compartment to short it out completely. The monodrone dutifully complied, closed its one eye and winced as the electricity racked through its body. The circuit had been blown and power to the factory had ceased. Winner? The weakened monodrone asked. But there in that silence, the dual drone heard something he had never heard before. It was the sounds of the chaos beast. The pair grabbed their spears and loaded their combat protocols. They might only be two modrons, but they were also many. As they crept towards the noise, they spotted the creature sitting atop a large cog on the floor of bronze, surrounded by scrap and other recycled materials. It had brown fur covering its back and was using its large teeth to tear away at some material, possibly attempting to make a nest for some of its chaos spawn. Monodrone A634E440 and Duodrone 7A7AE8A1 had successfully killed the Chaos Beast invader that day. A large brown rat from Mary Wynette's kitchen in Suzale. The Modrons had restored order.
So what did you think of our Modron friends today? Here's the finished mini for the shelf. I had a lot of fun making this episode. Uh, sometimes it's nice to remember that just like in life, sometimes the little victories are just as important as the big ones. Guys, if you've ever considered taking your role playing to the next level, maybe give miniature painting a try. The minis are very reasonably priced. You can pick them up from your friendly local gaming store, slap a coat of paint on them and make up a story for yourself or use one of the ones that we make here on Paint to Life. It's a lot of fun and I think you're going to enjoy it. I've only been painting for 397 days. Oh, I sound like a Modron now. <laughs> But you know what? Every time you paint, you get better. There's lots of really great communities out there on YouTube and on Facebook that you can join and be a part of. It's just a lot of fun. I release new Paint to Life episodes every Saturday, and the painting video that plays up there during this episode can be found on the subsequent Tuesday release with my commentary, as well as a little bit more in depth of why I did certain things. This week in particular, I visited a local machine shop. Thank you very much to Ryan for these scrap metal flakes and shavings that I was able to use in the basing. Very cool. So you can find a link for that uh, in the description below. Also at painttolife.com, you can find all my videos, my blog, my Instagram page is all there as well in one handy spot for you if you'd like to check it out. Next week, we're back to dragons of the metallic variety with the bronze dragon. So come see that. Otherwise, have a great week. Stay safe. I'm GMA Tank. Thanks for watching. Wash your hands, people. Hey, wait, weren't you that person that did that voice for that young baby dragon in that one episode? Yeah.